This is a night God has made, and you can make the choice to either complain about it or rejoice and be glad. And I love the scripture that says, as for me and my house, we're going to praise the Lord. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. You know, Wednesdays has been for us for a long time a prophetic night, a night of prophecy. And uh, prophecy really unfolds and avails itself in so many different forms, formats, ways. What prophecy really is, is the future, uh, and not, not, not a future, but the future, your future, coming to pass. And God has placed the future, your future, inside of you. And it really is a gift to be able to help unlock someone else's future in order to find yours, because we're so connected, we're so intertwined, that the body, or the word calls us the body of Christ. And the word says it like this, it says, esteem one more highly than yourself. Pray one for another so you can be healed. And how, how do you unlock, I mean, and is there something to unlock? Is, is, there, is there a key to unlocking things that God has called you to? or has spoken to you or promised you. I mean, any believer, actually anyone on the planet, has a hope or has a dream regarding some aspect of their lives, of your life, of my life. God has positioned us in a place, in a world that is sustained by the Word of God and exists through our faith. Uh, the humanity, our, our, everything we develop, everything that we watch unfold is all about vision and about dreams. You hear new technology uh, or new breakthroughs. It's because someone has a vision. And the word says, without that vision, my people perish. And it's that vision, you know, vision and faith. And then it's so important to understand that everything that unfolds to purpose, in, every, in other words, what comes to pass where you can see your purpose unfolding, which is always so encouraging when you see this is what God has called me to do, or I see the hand of God in my life. I know I'm walking in my purpose. And it's really all about prophecy. And then we hear Joel prophesy in the Old Testament where he says, in the last days, God is going to pour out his spirit on all flesh, meaning all peoples, all nations, and then he said, your sons and your daughters, I, I see your sons and your daughters prophesying. Uh, your old men will dream dreams. Uh, your young men are going to see visions. And it wasn't that it was in such a, a sequential category, but that he was seeing a future unfold. And what and how, the way he saw it unfolding, he said is the, the Spirit of the Lord will be, the God's going to pour out of his Spirit on the earth and People are going to begin to prophesy. People of all demographics, all ages, people are going to begin to prophesy. And that's, a, that's such a key component to things coming to pass because God fulfills His Word. And the Spirit of the Lord has always called out the future from the beginning of time. God said the first prophetic word. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And then the Word says, in the image of God... In other words, what God said came to pass. In the image of God, he created man and he created woman. In his image, he created them. And then God told them what to do. Our, our futures, our destiny, that, that thing that gives you the sense of accomplishment or fulfillment, but more than that, that brings what, what change, prophecy unfolding, brings into the world is so critical. It's, it's such a huge and important part of who you are, who every single individual is. Prophecy unfolding. And God will speak to you. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And if you, if you know Christ, if you've called on Him, and you're born of the Spirit, then God's calling you. And if you're not, God's calling you to be born again. The, the voice of God, the will of God is inescapable. I'm not saying you can't ignore it or you can't deny it for yourself, but as a whole... The word of God, he says, my word has been sent and my word will not return void, but it will accomplish everything that I purposed for it to do. And that's where we're at. 
Everything God said he's going to do. And how's he going to do that? When, when is that time? When is that date? When is that season going to unfold? The scriptures tell us that there was a time when Jesus was about to ascend and some of the disciples were standing around and when he had ascended, they stood there and they gazed up at him. And some angels appeared and said, what I hear God saying to us today, why are you standing here gazing? Go and do what you've been anointed to do. Go and do what you have been called to do. And for every single individual, it's knowing this is what God has called me to do. And no matter what I see unfold or don't see unfold, I know this is my purpose. And I'm going to continue to pursue consistently. We talk about that all the time. We talked about that uh, last night. Consistency. Continuing to do whatever it is God has called you to do but doing it with all your heart, doing it with all your might, doing it with all that lies within you. And the key to doing that is knowing you're doing it. Know I am on point, on time, and on purpose. And when you unfold, when you begin to unfold, things around you begin to change. And the great thing about it is the word says, give and it shall be given. You, we, as individuals, because we are the body of Christ, we uh, prevail. We are unveiled. The, the characteristics of who we are in Christ are made more manifest when we give to others, when we're encouraging to others, when we forgive one another, when we love one another. You're prophesying every time you do something that God has commanded us in His Word to do. And his, this is what's really important, to be confident, to know what I'm doing is the will and the Word of God. And you can't allow the things around you, whether it's what, whether or not someone recognizes your gift or your talent or your ability, or whether or not it seems miles away or right at your front door. And a lot of times, many, many times, it can seem, it can seem both ways. It can seem like it's just such, such a far distance off. The, the thing that you're believing for, the thing you feel God has called you to do is such a far distance away and sometimes it feels like it's just right there. It's, it's just right there, and, and you just can't put your hand on it or can't, can't put your finger on it. And on both sides of the spectrum, if you're not thinking prophetically, if you're not thinking in alignment with the way you're designed, you're created, and you're called to think, they can both be frustrating. It's right there, but I can't put my finger on it. Uh, I've felt that way many times throughout my ministry and throughout my life. There's something right there, just something right there, and I, I, can't, I, 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 can, I can smell it, I can sense it. I feel like I can hear it, but I can't put my, my finger on it. Or sometimes it feels like it's so far in the distance. And in a moment's time, that distance, that span is shortened, and it shows up. Also, that thing that you may be feeling that whatever it is in your life, your, your ministry, your business, your family, your relationship, your marriage, whatever it is, whatever that vision is, or it could be, I know I'm supposed to have a vision, but I'm just not sure what it is. Let me, let me give you a key. You don't lack anything. There isn't anything in your life, there isn't anything about you that you're lacking in order to fulfill what God has called you to do. And one of the first most important important and empowering steps of prophetically aligning and connecting what God has called you to do and what God is calling in to come to you. Remember he said, if you seek first the kingdom of God, seek first the kingdom. I mean, the kingdom can seem a long ways off in respect to the kingdom of God if you don't know how to think about it. Think about it. And the word says, God, Jesus uses a parable, and he said, a sower went to sow seed, and he sowed seed here, sowed seed there, some fell by the wayside, some of the birds ate, some, and, he, and he gives all these different analogies, but the, the key was, and a lot of people will say, yeah, I feel like my vision has been stolen, what God's called me to do, it's been stolen, it's, it's, it's hesitating for some reason. The word says, only those who don't understand. Why was it stolen? Why did the evil one or, or evil or your enemies come and take it away? The word says, when they lacked understanding of the word of the kingdom. Only because they lacked understanding was the word taken away. And it really wasn't that someone came and took the way. 
or took it away, but it's really not understanding what that is. And it begins knowing what it is, being on point, on time, on purpose, is all about knowing what the Scripture said. God has given us all things. He's given you everything, everything that pertains to your life, to your future, to your present, and to being godly. He's given me all things that pertain to life. I mean, the fall of mankind took place because mankind, Eve, Adam, felt like there was something in this vast garden of everything you could imagine without shame, uh, without struggle, without envy, without strife, everything you could imagine. God says the entire earth is yours and I've given you dominion, dominion, because we feel like we could just be in control. We could just be in control. If I could just make this thing happen. But the world God created, Adam and Eve lived in that perfect world. No shame, uh, didn't have to worry about shining their shoes, washing their clothes, doing the dishes. I mean, it was, a, it was a world where God said, I want your faith and your obedience and your trust in my word to be the authority of your life. You don't lack anything. It doesn't look like you have anything. You don't have clothes, but you don't have shame. You don't have to cover your shame. So there's certain things you might, you could think that you would need, but you're not going to need any of them. Just trust, trust in the Lord. Trust my word. Trust me. You don't lack anything. And then God said, I've given you all things. I've given you everything. Christ is saying the same thing to us today. I've given you everything. But what, what, what enemy? You know, was it a serpent? Was it a, the devil? Was it, you know, some dark power that came on Eve that day? I mean, what was it and what is it that seems to steal or, or has caused your vision that moments of hesitation and, and distance to where you can't walk in it? Understanding. Understanding what? Understanding that you don't lack anything. When you realize, I don't lack anything, a number of things happen that really can put your future off in the distance, that really causes hesitation. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. When you feel like that sometimes, you know, it, it just seems like things are deferred. Things are, just, I mean, what am I doing wrong? I found the key that God revealed to me that transformed my life is I don't lack anything but to praise God for everything that he's given me. Eve thought she was missing something. She looked at the tree. The word says it was good for food. The serpent said to her, if you eat of this tree, you're going to be like God. You're going to know things you don't know. Everything God wants you to know, you know right now. Everything that's necessary to build a foundation that God is going to build your future on, you know. And there's one thing that makes that prevail in our lives. God, I praise and thank you. You have given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Remember, we enter his courts with thanksgiving and, and into his, or enter in, in, into the gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. God, I thank you that I have sufficiency in everything. I don't lack anything. If you begin to take on the understanding that God has given you the measure of faith that you need. He's given you all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called me to glory and virtue and honor and power and praise and the ability to take dominion in your earth, first this earth. And it begins by saying and understanding there isn't anything in my life that I lack. And here's where the curveball is thrown. Eve looks and says, there's something that I'm missing. There's something that I don't have. So she followed the advice or the suggestion of a serpent. Now keep in mind the serpent was a gift. The serpent was given. The word says everything that God made, everything that flew, everything that walked, that crawled, that swam, everything above, everything in the earth, everything in the water, God made, and it pleased him, and he called it good, and he blessed everything. The serpent was included in that blessing. God made, God blessed. Now, why was he there? And he sounded evil. The things that God prepares for us, the things that God has given us, if you don't understand, I don't lack anything, no weapon formed against me will prosper. A thousand can fall at my side. Ten thousand at my right hand, it will not come nigh me. The Lord has blessed me. He's given me everything. That understanding, that revelation, that prophetic insight that says my future is within my grasp. That's what Jesus said. He says the kingdom of God is within you. He said no one's going to be able to tell you it's, it's coming, it's over here, it's over there. But he said know that the kingdom of God does not come with observation. The kingdom of God is a part of who you are. The future, the dynamics, the destiny of whatever it is 
God has called you into. It's nowhere in the distance. That, I can't put my finger quite on that. The revelation that God had given me, and this could be in a word that, that I know God has for me to deliver, something He wants me to, to speak on, something He wants me to understand. And, and I've had those times where I felt like there's something just, just right there, but I can't put my finger on it. And instead of trying to find out what it was, I just begin to thank the Lord. God, I thank you that you've given me all things. David, when he walks up to the camp of, of the Philistines, he didn't stand there. We don't hear him saying things like, if I only had a bigger sword, you know, and Saul's is too big. I mean, it, the kings won't fit me. It's, it's just, and I haven't proven it. If I, if, you know, if I just had more weaponry, if my brothers and the rest of these guys weren't so afraid, his attitude, his mind was understanding the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Whatever the configuration of life is, however I meet it, whatever I wake up to, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't lack anything. If we as believers would take on the, the mind, the understanding, the revelation, the prophetic spirit that I don't lack anything in my life, everything that God has given you begins to avail itself because it's revealed through confidence in the Word of God. Eve had she had confidence in the word of God, I have all knowledge, I have all understanding. God has given me dominion over all the earth. What if she had said to the serpent, bow down and worship God? Isn't that what God told him to do? He said, take dominion over all the earth. And how do we do that? How do we take dominion? How do we take prophetic dominion? Not wait for prophecy. How do we become a prophetic moment? How do we watch things unfold? Number one, stop listening to any voice or any image or any visual, or someone else's life that tells you you're lacking something that you need. The, the key, the power, was when God said, I've given you dominion over all the earth. That was the prophetic word. God said, let them have dominion. God is saying the same thing. He is the Lord God. I love the scripture that says, His way is perfect. He hasn't left me without. God is present with you. If you don't feel the presence of the Lord, just be aware that our natural senses don't have the tendency to detect whether God is around or not. But His Word is our assurance. Lo, I'm with you always. The, the transforming marker in your life is, God, you've given me everything that I need. You become a prophetic voice. when you, you not, not calling out necessarily what it is that God's going to do, but calling out prophetically, there isn't anything that I lack. God's given me sufficiency in all things. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. We think about the kingdom of God being captured out of this world and ascending into the heavens and thinking about everything being there, everything we need, health, joy, peace, soundness, no more worry, no more pain. Jesus said, I want you to pray this way. When you pray, pray that that kingdom would be manifest in the earth. And what did he say? That kingdom abides in you. How? Trust that the word that I've given you is that prophetic sound. This generation of prophetic utterance that Joel talked about, Peter recognized when the Spirit of the Lord came. He said, hang on, this is that that was prophesied by Joel. We're living in that day. David didn't say, I'm waiting for more artillery or more armors. He said, the word of the Lord is in me. And whatever you say against me is not true. Uh, the, the, the giant tried to undermine David's mindset. And you can think, I wonder how afraid David was. I wonder how afraid Goliath was. I wonder about how, what the prevailing faith of David may have made Goliath feel. I mean, if you hear about it, he starts speaking against David. I mean, why didn't he just take his sword and, and try and chop him in two? He starts to communicate to David how minuscule, how in minus, what a deficit he was in his presence. When you're that confident, that's not what you do. You just take care of business. David's presence of faith, and I've said this so many times, it wasn't that David fought well, he believed well. Why? Because he understood, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. I lack nothing. Eve, I lack nothing. Adam, I lack nothing. God has said, the word of the Lord is yes, and in him, amen. Everything God has said about me is going to come to pass. 
The key component behind David, the key that I found, is I act upon what God has told me I know, whether I'm able to comprehend it or not, and you can't allow your senses to tell you. I've heard people say many, many times, I don't feel the presence of the Lord. It doesn't matter that you feel the presence of the Lord. What is, a re what is revelatory, what is empowering, is that God feels your presence. God is with you. He knows you're there. He said, lo, I'm with you always. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But the key here is keeping your identity in who God has called you to be and not letting that slip away because you hear the voice of a serpent. You, you watch the news or you listen to uh, some, something someone's saying about a time that's coming, an evil time or a bad time or a chaotic time. Jesus said, when you hear about these things, he said, don't be worried. Don't be afraid. He said, lift up your head. Look, your redemption is drawing nigh. Pray, your kingdom come, your will be manifest in this vessel. I found that every time I'm at that point of, it's, it's right there, but I, I, I can't quite put my finger on it, or it feels like it's so in the distance. I forget about what I'm thinking about that I need. And I start just declaring prophetically. And that's what brings things to pass. We, I say this all the time. If you don't tell time, in other words, if you don't say it's this time, Time is going to tell you, and what time will tell you is it's not time yet. If you don't tell time, time will tell you. But if you will say like David did, today, Goliath, everything you said about me is going to fall on you because I'm already confident in what God has said about me and to me. Today I have victory. He prophesied the word of the Lord. His attitude, his mind, his understanding was I don't lack anything. You don't lack anything in your life in order to see what God has called you to do unfold, except one thing. Grab your stone, grab your sling, and start swinging it and let it go. Whatever God has given you to do, whatever God has put in your hand, it's there. It doesn't have to look like a lot. Jesus said, what will I like? Here in, in Matthew 18, verse 23, Jesus is speaking. He says, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, what can I compare it to? He said, I'll compare it to a king who wanted to settle his accounts, so he came and he took account. Called his servants and took account. Take account of whatever God has put in your heart, whatever God has given you. Take account of what you have. If God has promised you a, 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 a tremendous business, a tremendous, if God has promised you healing, healing in your home, healing in your body, your, your business to increase, your church, your ministry to grow. You don't know what way God is going to grow your business, your family, your church, or your ministry. That's in the hands of God. God knows your, your portion. He knows your part. He knows what he's called you to be. But when we begin to identify our future based on what we think we're missing, we lose our identity, we lose our way, we begin to doubt, and then we, we stunt our movements, we, we paralyze our actuation, our ability to do. Do what God, whatever it is God has put in your hand, He said, I'm going to take account. Let's take account. This is a day of taking account. What has God given you? Well, it, it doesn't seem like much, but, but He said this, He said, the, the, the smallest of seeds, a mustard seed, it has to take account that it is a seed and bury it. When you lose your life in Christ and you recognize that God is everything and He is my life, how can I lack anything? When you lose your identity in yourself, you find your true identity in Him because only God knows. This is a day of accounting. What has God given me? Well, He's given me two hands to praise. You might be lying in bed saying, I need a healing. Well, you have, the, you have the strength and the knowledge or at least the wherewithal to say, I, I need a healing. So instead of saying, I need, say, I've, God has given me. God has given me. And begin to bless those around you. Pray one for another. Begin to prophesy not what you lack. Faith doesn't show you what you're missing. Faith shows you what you have. Faith shows you that you lack nothing. I have sufficiency of all things. I'm a prophetic voice. I'm a prophetic word. God has set me in the world today. He's given me breath. He's given me life to speak into my family. You, may, you don't even necessarily have to speak to people. Speak to the heavens. I, I love to say this all the time because I sense it. We're here to make heaven restless. What does that mean? We're here to pull on heaven. The kingdom of God, Jesus said, is in your grasp. We're going to shake the heavens with our faith. That's why God created us, so we couldn't see who he was with our eyes. We couldn't feel him. And when you begin to, to, to declare, I've, God has given me all things, 
I've had over and over and over, revelation begins to pour into me. That thing that was just beyond my fingertip, I found it in the palm of my hand. It's like I raise my hands and you just begin to praise God. And when you open your hands, you look, look God put it there. That revelation, that knowledge, that, that insight that you need, it's there. That movement you need, just, just move. Whatever you have, move the thing. Move that stone closer to the foundation. Move, move whatever God has given you. You don't lack anything. God is saying, I want, there needs to be movement. You need to actuate. You need to activate. You need to move whatever it is. And you can say, well, I don't know what to do. Of course you do. God told you. Seek first the kingdom. God, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Be manifest in me. And not only that, but I lack nothing. You've given me sufficiency in all things. As a matter of fact, I have more than I know to ask or think. And that, that, is, be, that is being moved. That is being sown in the earth today. And it's going to come forth. And it's going to manifest not only that I'm in your presence but that you are aware of me. Not only am I calling on you, but you're making me a witness for who you are. And that's what Jesus said. I'll make you a witness in the earth. Don't let the influence of what other people say, don't let the influence of what you think you lack or don't have, identify your future and your true identity. Only God knows that. Only God knows how he created you. Don't let the ear say, because I'm not an eye, you know, that I'm missing something. You're not missing anything. You are a part of the body of Christ, a significant, specific, unique part. And only through praise, only through confidence that I lack nothing, God has given me all things, and not identifying what someone else has that you may not have, or what they know that you may not know, God has given you your lane. He's placed it in your hand. He's put it in your heart. He wants to bring it out by a prophetic word. And that word is in you. In the last day, says God, you are going to prophesy. You're going to see visions. You're going to dream dreams. You will know exactly what God wants you to know. But he's wanting you to dig deep in praise and in thanksgiving with a mind that I lack nothing. God has given me all things. The word says when the king came to take account, he said, what have you done with what I gave you? To one he gave five. To another he gave two. Another account where Jesus is talking about an account of what he had given. And the five, the guy that said, I have five, he said, I, I invested it and here's five more. The other guy, I have two, I invested it, here's two more. The guy that thought he lacked, he didn't, he did, he, he, it didn't look like the numbers added up. But what Jesus is saying is, is the kingdom is not about what you have in comparison. He has five, he has two, I have one. You must have less confidence in me. He's the one that, that the, the, the king, that the kingdom identified the most. Here's what you lack. You lack the confidence in knowing that whatever it is is in your hand. If you would just do something with it, put it somewhere, put it somewhere, do something where give it a chance to come alive. Give it a chance to breathe. If out of the one God would increase you to a hundred, how much greater would that be even than the five going five or the two going four? What God has given you, he wants to do a wonder with it. And he wants to prove, and God knows, that you're worthy of a little. And with that, God can do much. Whatever God has given you, that's the portion God has anointed you for. That's what you're going to do best. That's what's going to reveal the kingdom of God that is on the inside of you. This is the greatest season of your life. Embrace it, love it, believe it, thank him for it. What do you lack? Nothing. God has given you sufficiency of all things and this is the greatest season of your life father we give you praise and thank you for the the grandeur and the fullness of your word and and the word of the Lord is not far away the word of the Lord is nigh us even in our mouth God has spoken how can we help but prophesy his word his word abides in us and father we give you praise I thank you for a prophetic anointing in the hearts of your people I thank you for an awakening and a stirring in the earth. God, I thank you for an outpouring, uh, an awakening to righteousness, a prevailing power of prophecy to come out of the voices, the hearts, and the minds of your people. That we, our ears hear, our mouths say, God has said, as David said, and every giant and every foe and every point of revelation and victory, every marker of the future will unfold as it did with David as I did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God, no matter what it is, there's another side in which you prevail. And God, it's by faith what God has given me. What you have given us, we sow unto you. We give whatever it is. We bless you with whatever it is. We thank you 
with whatever it is because we believe you and we thank you for the fullness of all things. We lack nothing. And in that we will see the abundance, exceeding abundant and above. All we know to ask or think in your mighty name, God, we give you praise. And everyone out there and everyone here says, amen, amen, and amen. Listen, the altar is open. I want to encourage you, sow a seed in the soil of this word today. And remember, if you keep God's word, if you trust God's word, God's word will keep you. This is the greatest season of your life. God bless you. Until next time.